you know we have these RNNs and they are called recurrent neural networks. They're not called recursive neural networks. And transformers are very, very similar. They are auto-regressive, which means you have a model, uh, you predict a token, and then you place the the answer back into the context and you rinse and repeat. And you're you're doing this thing called a recurrent process, but you can can, um, symbolically kind of represent this as something which looks like a recursive function. So it's F calling F calling F calling F calling F. So why is it exactly that that is not recursive? Okay. The, the, it's amazing that uh, always confusion happens because something implies something, so people assume the implication both ways. Or something is a subtype of something, people assume they're equal. Similarity is different from implication. Implication has an arrow, so it, there's a, it comes this way, not this way. Okay, equivalence is equality, yeah, if and only if. A recursion is a recurrence, but recurrence is not recursion. Let me explain that. Recurrence is any repetitive process. I mean, I can, uh, a loop is a recurrence. I can go to the ugliest way of looping, just go back here. I mean, which has no sound semantics whatsoever. It doesn't have even a sound stopping criteria, and I'll get to that. That's at the heart of recursion. Recurrence is, I want to repeat this thing again. That's it. That's it. So yes, RNNs are recurrent neural networks. They're not recursive. What is the huge difference? Recursion is a computing model, actually. It's not a, just a, a repet- It's not a... You know, in programming language, we speak of constructs, if then else, loop, while. Recursion is not a, a programming construct. Recursion is a computing model. Actually, recursive functions are equivalent to Turing machines. They're equivalent to lambda calculus and first order predicate logic. This has been proven. All these comp- computational models are equivalent. So recursion is a computing model. It's not just a construct, repeat. Now, what is at the heart of recursion? What what makes... Okay, so we agree uh, recursion is a way of recurring something, repeating something. And there are so many other recurrence uh, relations, uh, constructs. Go to, like I said, very simple. While, loop, whatever. But recursion is more constrained. Recursion has clear semantics for the stopping criteria, has a base case, even the way you recurse is not anything goes. So basically recursion can be explained in one little formula. F, some function, takes input, and we'll talk about the importance of data. Data is important to recursion. So I have F that takes some input and wanna compute something on that input. I have to traverse that data structure to its base case. Right. So in the base case, it depends on the data type. So for lists, the base case is the empty list. For numbers, it's zero. For uh, trees, it's the null tree. And then we compose. Compositionality comes in. Recursion and compositionality and induction, mathematical induction, are really three things telling the same thing. All of that doesn't exist in recurrence. Recurrence is go back and do this again. It's that simple. Recursion yeah. is different. Recursion is a computing model where I have to define f of base case, f of the general case, which is some g of f of one less from the input. So I keep consuming the input. But g, the final function that does something with the recursive call result, has to also be primitive recursive. It's very, yeah. it's very, the, the semantics are very constrained. This is not, now, and it's tied to the fact that our data types that we consume are themselves recursive types. So how do we make a list? It's either empty or it's some element attached to what? A list. So we're defining a list in terms of itself. People, uh, these two are related. Numbers. I have a zero or I have some compositional function successor on what? A number. Three. What is a three? Three. It's either empty, that's my base case, or it's two trees, I'm defining a tree in terms of itself, that I fork together and make a bigger tree. So 
Otherwise, you don't have recursion. You have recurrence. You have, can you go and yeah. do this again? Basically. I, I, I don't know if I explained well. it, but because, look. No, the, no, no, very, very much so. But I would also like to add in that the stopping condition, I mean, in, a, in an RNN, you might say, I want you to produce 300 tokens, but the stopping condition is, is extrinsic. It's not intrinsic to the problem. Exactly. In recursion, you, you, you take the data and you break it down into smaller right. sub-problems. And, in in but, recursion, um, the stopping criteria is a, is a semantic criteria. It's a function of the data and the function itself. Yeah. In, in yeah. recurrence, I can stop whenever I want. I can say, actually, I can say, do this 200 times. I don't care. Or, or yeah. I can say, yeah. Okay. Exactly, exactly. exactly because um because yeah. like the the naive take on it is just that well in something like an rnn you 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 have um you don't have an expandable memory you have a fixed amount of compute either exactly. in time or in a transformer architecture you have a fixed amount of, of yeah. compute um so it's, but, it's actually but, related to infinite objects yeah, well, but, well yeah i want to get there yeah. in just a second so <laughs> so the other thing is um as chomsky does in his hierarchy you can also think of the class of languages which are producible from from these models and a truly recursive function can produce what he would call recursively enumerable languages, whereas tail Correct. recursion on an RNN would not be able to do that. But no. it then brings us to this key issue. Coming back to Chomsky. Is Actually, Chomsky recur recurrence are at the bottom of this hierarchy, regular expressions, or if you want, finite state machines. So I can, because they have recurrence, but they don't have recursion. That's a good yeah, point. It, it, yeah. it, exactly. So, so there was this recent um, DeepMind paper talking about a mapping between the Chomsky hierarchy and different models. And you have um, standard MLPs, which are just finite state automatas, mm -hmm. and uh, RNNs can produce regular languages. And um, you go all the way up to the stack to this recursively enumerable languages, which can be recognized by Turing machines. So the Chomsky hierarchy is actually about the class of languages which you can recognize with the model. And then it, it gets me to two points. So Chomsky spoke a lot about the importance of recursion in our language yeah. and a Turing machine can recognize recursively enumerable languages, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then someone will say, well, um, well, I've got these transformers models and they can approximate recursively enumerable uh -huh. languages to a certain level of complexity, probably within the horizon, which is ever seen in language. Therefore, why do we not need the Turing machines? Right. Okay. So we go back to approximate, which is related to our first argument that probably what large language models have been able to do is pretty much cover most of language for all practical reasons. Okay, so we're, we're talking about the approximate approximation. You, you can never go, if you don't have uh, real recursion over infinite objects, all you're doing is approximation. But can you get to a point where your approximation is almost close to the whole thing? That's a big question, remains to be seen. And in my mind, it's an open question, actually. Uh, apparently, as far as syntax, they've proved that. That they, you know, uh, apparently I don't need a context-free grammar that can handle an infinite number of sentences. The set of is infinite. I don't need that. They proved that in, in a way. I mean, I don't know if... Uh, uh, but since, but the grammar produces generates. Uh, it's a it's a recursively enumer. I can I can always enumerate in this set another valid sentence. They've learned that infinite set. They've approximated that infinite set. I mean, okay. okay. Yeah. I mean, I was speaking with uh, Professor Chris Elliot Smith the other day, and um, and he asserted that RNNs are Turing complete. That they're, they're not Turing complete. No, no but not. The, but the thing is, though, um, look, anything whenever, that doesn't when, have, anything that doesn't have infinite tape or memory, right? Uh, yeah. But, 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 but the thing yeah, is, right. like even even the the Turing machine, it's an abstract mathematical concept because a lot of people we've spoken to, even like Pedro Domingos, they hate it when we cite infinity, right? Because they say, well, I know, you, haven't, I know. you haven't really got... But, but, but the thing is, what you would say, Waleed, no. is that there's something very powerful about being able to represent an infinite object with a finite object. With a finite then, specification, right? I mean, but can look, you give look, me an example, though, of... Of course, Tim, in, I've in, been doing... I've been, a practical example that we use, all of us, our, uh, all tech people use every day, right? Your, your favorite compiler is what? Java, Python, I don't know, C-sharp. 
You're a, you're don't, a dot don't, net. Don't tell you're a dot net guy. Like <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but it doesn't it doesn't matter. They're all equivalent anyway. So let's say um, Python, right? Okay, because probably our crowd is more Python people, right? So Python. Uh, it doesn't matter what version of your compiler you you have. If you write a valid Python program, the Python compiler will not say, "Sorry, this is not uh, this is not in my set." I mean, we we deal with infinity every day. I I I, I wrote something about that. I can't believe someone as brilliant as Domenico uh, will will say something like that. His Python compiler or his Java compiler, I don't know what he uses, is ready for how many programs? Infinite. That's infinite. a practical infinity. That's not a, an abstract infinity. The Python compiler has to be ready for any valid program. And any here is what? Infinity. That's a practical infinity, as practical as you can get. Now, <laughs> this applies to many other problems. And, and this is the power of logic and recursion. This didn't come from nowhere. We were talking about recursion just a second ago. It's related to infinity. I can define an infinite object, which is what, in this case, all, the set of all valid Python programs. Guys, this is very simple. I, I, managed, okay. to get, uh, I managed to get first-year computer science students to, to get this. I am defining, in a finite way called a grammar, an infinite set of Python programs that my compiler now is ready for. That's practical infinity on your machine every morning. So, so I, I, I agree with that, so and it's I, very intuitive. I, I, don't, we, I, well, I don't know why the concept is that strange. Well, let me, let me say it a slightly different way. So, so, yeah, there are an infinite set of possible programs, obviously. There's an infinite set of language, obviously. Chom Chomsky said there's, it's, it's uh, an oxymoron to talk about the probability of a sentence. But, but yeah, the thing I course. wanted to get to, though, is practically, Chris Elliott Smith said, well, um, we can we can approximate these recursively enumerable languages. Language, language, natural language is a recursively enumerable language. But is there a um, is there a difference between having a real Turing machine traverse this infinite space? Right, because let's say we, we've got bounded time in both. Right on the um, on the RNM, we've got yeah, bounded yeah, time. On the Turing machine, yeah. we've got bounded it's time. It's not about time. Is it's there not a about difference? Time. It's not about time and it's not about space. People tell me, but we're finite people. We never speak everything. In that. That's not where the infinity is. The infinity is the antithesis of probability, meaning you cannot state with any certainty what I might say next. So you have to be ready for how many infinite. Let me explain it this way. Tim, it's very simple. That's the magic of recursion and logic. When I write a Python compiler, I cannot write it in such a way that hopefully Tim will never write this program. I have to be ready for an infinite set of valid Python programs. That's where the infinity is. It's not about time and space. We, this compiler might not be used by anyone. Forget well, infinite yeah, hang, time. Hang, hang, and, um, let, let me phrase it slightly differently. So with, with Python, it makes yeah. sense. We have to have a compiler which oh. can recognize an infinite number of Python programs. With, with natural obviously, language. Obviously. With natural but, language. But, but, but we've just been saying with natural language, that's not the case. <laughs> have we not? I'm saying they've done a good job approximating. Remains to be seen. <laughs> Look, Tim, we haven't put this thing in actual use yet in the wild. Okay, let, let's yeah. be careful. Yeah. I mean, and, and most people, I have to say, most people that are testing it, they're testing it to be amazed and they're liking what they see and they're overlooking all the, I don't want to use bad language. No, no, let, let, the, the, the debate is not over by, by any means. So when we put these things in the wild, like a person walking the streets of San Francisco and someone stops them and say, hello, they cannot predict what they will ask with any probability. This is what the genius of Chomsky. Speaking of the probability of any sentence is not just a meaningless notion. It, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't, I mean, you cannot predict what I might ask you next. Forget it. You're, because you're picking from an infinite set. Anything over infinity is zero. So your, your probability means nothing. And the, the Python compiler uh, uh, example, applies to language, applies to SQL, you know, uh, a SQL compiler, databases, that applies to all computation. 
I have to be ready for an infinite set of objects that you might throw at me. That any is infinity. I, I can't, uh, infinity is not a theoretical concept. It's a real concept. Actually, mm-hmm. the halting problem reduces to infinite regress. What is the halting problem? I can never write a program P to test another program if it terminates. Why? Because what if my testing program doesn't terminate? If my testing program doesn't terminate, now I have two possibilities. It doesn't terminate, or while it was running my program, it didn't terminate. So I need to write the program that tests if this one terminates. It goes to infinity. It's infinite regress. The halting problem, or most paradoxes, unless you want to approximate, again, you can approximate infinity, but approximating infinity, doesn't it sound silly? Cool. Dr. No, Walid Sabah. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Always fun. Always fun.